Today is, I think it's November 27th, Monday. It's like 8.15 a.m. I'm finally taking my car in to the appointment to have a bunch of work done. So I'm on my way into the, to the city. Big old city. But, so I did say it's the 27th, 2023, 8.20 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I wanted to talk a little bit about crypto NFTs individual access and what I see the future the step <laughs> come to the future with me um, all right so I know there's a lot of controversy around crypto and NFTs and what have you. And it's it's like anything, it's a it's ignorance, it's a lack of knowledge, and people are jumping into these things to try to get rich quick without understanding it. And they're losing a lot of money. I've lost money in crypto. Overall I'm up, but I mean I've made some bad investments. I've bought some NFTs from in some individuals that I trusted that had decade old reputations that tried to do some things and then literally threw away a whole decade of reputation online in a panic instead of you know trying to overcome some obstacles I think the stress got to them and most people don't know how to run a business and aren't emotionally stable and stuff when they have a skill set that they've been focusing on they haven't been focusing on the other skill sets but um, the so for those of you who don't know when you when they a lot of people just think that an nft is a, is a jpeg online and it's actually the image is actually connected to the token still in, in into the coins and it represents uh, something that's it's a visual representation of something that's been tracked on the ledger and the blockchain so even if the website in the in the jpeg goes down which it could you can still link to that thing and show proof of ownership and for not everybody thinks conceptually well within stored value in numbers and images and words so i think what was happening is people that um, think in imagery when in their mind could understand NFTs a little bit better. It was kind of selling point for them because they couldn't understand the money aspect and they could understand how this was tied to the money because they could visually hold, represent something, put it in, my, in their wallet, show it off, change their pictures and stuff. I didn't buy any of the board apes or anything like that. What I want to talk about is utility NFTs. And that would be, for example, what if Netflix started issuing like yearly memberships or lifetime memberships nfts right i'm just going to pick netflix i don't have a netflix account and they sell them for a special price for example and they say okay here's a we're going to release a thousand lifetime nfts they're good for the entire the the company of, of netflix and they give you a, a lifetime membership so you can watch and stream any movies you want. And then on top of that, when there's movie premieres that Netflix is involved with, it'll give you like early access or uh, in-person access to going seeing these movie premieres. And so you're like an exclusive club with this NFT. So you would buy the NFT at a price or Sometimes they do them like raffles where you mint the NFT and you pay a fee. Say you pay $1,000 and you get a chance at like five top tier ones, five uh, second tier all the way down and expands out. So everybody pays the same price and it's kind of like a, a, a role, a, a AI generated, algorithmic generated roll of the dice that picks what you actually um, what you actually get as your NFT 
So then those Netflix, every time, so they would get the original funding in to them in crypto for the sale of this product that they're selling. And then if anybody were to resell that item for whatever price they want, it could be lower or higher depending on the value of the item. You could make a profit off selling and trading these things to people based on demand. Maybe you want to buy them before a big premiere comes out and then you buy them and then the premiere comes out and people realize it so then they want one so then they'll pay a premium for it and then every time they get traded or sold Netflix would get a small little portion of it the company that hosts the um, the NFT at the time for sale would get a piece of it and then if you sold it for lower you'd lose money if you sold it for more you'd gain money as the owner of the NFT so it'd be like a stock plus, you know, like a stock plus uh, an emotional incentive. Now you can individualize these as well. I know uh, artists like Kanye were trying to make NFTs and if you had a particular NFT at a particular value, then you could have dinner or business dinner with Kanye once a year. I was thinking about it this morning, talking about it on Twitter. It got zero traction. <laughs> but for instance, what if like um, 10 years ago, Bill Burr had an NFT, right? Or printed NFTs because he wanted to fund his special. So instead of having borrowing money from somebody else, he decentralized the and crowdsource the money for his special and I'm almost at my destination so I'll probably have to cut this short so he sells you know a hundred NFTs at fifty dollars a piece or whatever he needs for the money he divides it out he gets that income to start his project and the people going into it know that they may or may not be worth fifty dollars after the fact or they mint one and maybe one of them like, out of, you know, he prints a hundred of them or he prints a thousand of them. And out of the one, thousand of them, one of them gives a, whoever owns it, like, lifetime or for one year. Anytime Bill Burr has a show, they get front row seats. Another one is, like, once a year you get to eat dinner with Bill Burr. And then the rest of them are like, uh, you know, uh, one time, two free tickets to a local Bill Burr show. So he's crowdsourced this money with these NFTs in this, in this particular way. And then once the people own them, they could choose to do what they wanted to do with them and sell them. Now it'd be better to have like a, a, a you know, a ongoing thing. But if you own that, like for the life of Bill Burr's comedy career, you get dinner with him once a year, and he sold those 10 years ago, right? Every time it's sold, uh, Bill Burr would get a small little percentage. He'd get the original funding, but then a small little percentage of it every year following. But if he, now 10 years later, he's extremely popular, so more people would definitely want that prize the value of that NFT would go up. And the way to recognize that it was true is that it's stored on the blockchain. And that's the only way that people can prove access to download the tickets that give you access to uh, Bill Burr in that manner. So it's pretty much a way to crowdsource funding for a project or individual. And then because access is such a huge deal today, you would get access to that person. So if Taylor Swift, Kanye, even some of these OnlyFans models created NFTs that had utility like that, they could generate quite a bit of income on one end. Now, the, the thing is, these are like business contracts, so the person could back out. Bill Burr would be like, eh, I'm not gonna do it, buddy, or whatever Bill Burr impression <laughs> sounds like. Uh, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not going to go to dinner with you. I lied. And then so his other projects 
wouldn't get the funding like any other business. So, all right, I gotta vacuum my car. So that's all this video is, something to think about, 10 minutes.